Retro Riff, episode 119. Today's band focus is Baron Cross. Their second release, Atomic Arena. This is the new Legends Remastered. I got this in the mail today. So let's get a good review on this this one here. So, alright. So I got three different versions here. I have the original from 19... 88 on Enigma Records. This is the artwork here on the back, artwork on the front. Then there was a 2003 release on Ryko, Restless Ryko Records. And same artwork, everything was pretty much the same. We'll go through all that. So uh, this was my first band, the first CD I got after Striper. Uh, I picked this up, and this just blew me away. Ray Paris. Start breaking these down here. I'm gonna take away this one for right now. We're gonna open up the original and the first reissue. So the inside jacket is the same. You just have Restless here, Enigma here. You got this awful plain purple wet, uh, label on here. It just looks boring. The original blew it away. For 1988, this is actually pretty good here. I want to focus here. The tracks on there, track times, Enigma Records, it's actually a pretty nice looking disc. The inside jackets are the same, so there's no point in looking at those. Uh, we'll just look at the original. out of here. Right. How about Restless? You need to come out of that? Yeah. Here we go. So you pretty much just have the uh, picture of the guys here. The lyrics on the inside. Let's get to the next song here. You know what? We'll pick the next one. Love that bass tone there, Jim. Credits for the original. Produced by John Dino Lafonte in 1988. Produced at uh, Recorded at Packard Arms Studios. Yeah. Album cover. Concept by Ray Paris, the guitarist. Great artwork. Again, not much else going on in the packaging. So the sound from the original to the first re remaster -ish reissue, um, it sounded pretty much the same, but it was just a little bit louder. There was no real dynamics change in it. Um, it felt a little more compressed and a little bit louder, but louder doesn't mean better. So um, artwork is pretty much exactly the same. Pretty much the same there. Uh, the back is the same. Let's talk about the glare, guys. Ugh, no matter what I do is glare. This is at night, so I don't have uh, the sunlight for uh, light here. 
So again, pretty much the same, except for again, for the, the who, where it was released, that was pretty much it. And then the uh, CD itself, the, the jacket on the, the uh, label on the CD is not a big difference. So, alright, so we're going to keep the first reissue, and then we'll, this is the original, so we'll put this one down. Now we're going to bring in the new remaster, which I got today in the mail. So let's look at the packaging. At the first glance, you're probably much. Oh, it's pretty much the same thing, which it which it is. This is a very few differences here. You got uh, the Baron Cross on the new one that Scott uh, Waters did. It's a little bit more red. You got less of that white border around it. And let's see if I can do this here. I'm gonna have to do it this way. So something that I noticed. Ah, this is gonna be so hard to do. You know what? Let me uh, take these out of the jackets. Um. So I'm gonna compare the the uh, the jacket covers here. If I can get this thing out of here without destroying it. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Really? Okay, I got one. I get this other one here. Hold on. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for your patience with us. This is gonna be a lot easier to do this with uh, no glare. So again, covers are pretty much the same. Again, colors a little bit deeper and more rich on here on the new one that Scott did. Also on the actual Baron Cross on the top. And Scott, I did notice this. So I'm sure you probably said, no one's gonna notice this. So if you notice the original on top, the shadow of the letters go up. So you get the, the A, the R, see the shadow behind it? Now on Scott's, he had the shadows, it's a little harder to see, but the shadows go, they go down. They're below the lettering. Which again, it's a little hard to see, but I did notice that. Uh, because also on the shadows going down in, on these, which for me makes more sense. So if this is like, uh, like a, a rocket or something going up, your shadows would be facing down on both the top and the bottom. And that's what Scott did. Also on the Atomic Arena on the bottom. Great riff there. I wasn't too loud there. Um, on the new one, I guess the, I guess this one was kind of the same thing. I thought it was cut a little too like low to the bottom, but this one is the same. The original, the original is a little bit higher up. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. But nothing got cut off, so I mean, it, it's fine. So again, that's pretty much the only difference with that. Okay, now uh, this is the Ryko one. We don't need to see this one anymore because there's nothing else to look at now. Let's take a look at uh, the new internal liner notes. Nice. Baron Cross is Mike Lee, lead vocal, Ray Paris, lead guitar, Steve Whitaker, drums, and Jim Laverde, bass. Produced by John Adino. We kind of went over this already, 1988. 2020 remastered notes. Uh, released uh, by uh, Retroactive, Matthew Hunt. Remastered by Rob Cowell. Layout design, Scott Waters. Liner notes by Matthew Hunt. Nice picture of the boys here. 
I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Most of these I haven't seen. It's the Ray Paris there. So the 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 photos that were on, on the side back of the jacket here, Scott broke them up and put them on in, uh, each each page, which looks nice. Like Lee, you gotta go. You know who wrote, who wrote the songs? Nice, easily read lyrics. So I'm listening to Ray Paris here. Sounds fantastic. All killer, no filler. Every song is good. All right, let's continue back to the uh, liner notes here. Oh wow, we've got a nice collage here. Listen to the music while you look at the collage. on the original back here, whoa, upside down. What was on the original back here, Scott put on the back side here, so you still got that original artwork, which is cool. Oh, there's something in the poster in here. Oh, that's in the other one. So that's pretty much it for the uh, liner notes. Take a look at the back here. Let's look at see under the CD. You got a picture of the band here. Again, it's a photo I've never seen. It's a little bit better there. It's perfectly centered in between the circle of the disc, which looks nice, and the, uh, this doesn't block anything. It's got uh, Legends Remastered, which is um, properly uh, equal in distance, which looks good. Back cover. You got all the track numbers here, which I love. No times, but it's okay. Synopsis there by Matthew Hunt about the band. Um, retroactive. Now it doesn't say the year 2020 on here. It just says 2003 Reco Disc. In 1988, it was originally uh, recorded. Um, I asked Scott about that today, and he said that Reco insisted that it has to say exactly this exact wording they did not let them put 2020 when I mean, you have you know it's 2020 by what Matt says here but you won't see it on the disc or on the back of the year the correct year and that was something that was out of their control so little uh, info on that all right I'm gonna play my favorite song which was King of Kings 
killer song. Skip ahead to the lead here. Alright guys, I'm sure you already know this song, <laughs> all these songs. Uh, great, great reissue. Uh, I absolutely love the re new uh, remaster also. With the new packaging, you have to get this. You have to get this. If you have that Ryko one, just, just trade it away. You don't need it. Um, the remaster, compared to the Ryko, um, the new remaster, the mids are thicker, and the bass is uh, a, lot, a lot more thick, too. Give it a little more punch. A lot, of more, a, lot, a lot more low end bass. This song's almost thrash. So uh, definitely an upgrade in sound quality, packaging, just everything. Um, it's a definite must must buy. All right, guys, it's gonna be it for this one. Rock on! See you on the next one. Later.